Hello everyone and welcome to the Art of Life Project. I'm Tash Mitch, your host, and with me today I've got Tara Love Perry. Tara, Tara Love Perry is this shining beam of light. Um, the very first time I met her, there was such an instinctual feeling of meeting a kindred spirit, so I'm really excited to have her here. Tara is a master soul reader. She's also a doula and um, very, very interactive with helping women through their birthing process and she's an intuitive and helps people on a teaching level to tap into their own intuition but also to actually interact with the world through their intuition so Tara welcome <laughs> so yeah. Oh, it's, it's really, really lovely to have you here. So basically, the Art of Life project was set up to explore what it means to make our life a work of art. And if we're really living out of that concept of living a life that's our masterpiece, what does that look like? So if I was to ask you that question, Tara, what does it mean to make your life a work of art? See, Tash, that question is so big and deep and wide. Mm. You know, it's like, well, I could explore the many branches of yeah. what that means and what is art. And, and I did a degree in art. And, yeah. you know, there was always the theory of what it means to be an artist. Mm. And, and yet when I really ask myself, my heart, my essence, what does that mean? For me, it's to participate because my feeling is that life is already this most exquisite piece of art. But yes. We can try to duplicate and replicate and express and communicate about. And for some reason, we never quite seem to do it justice. It always surpasses us just that little bit more. Mm. You know, the poetry that's been coming out of people like Rumi and the, mm. and the paintings that come out of people like Turner and, you know, this in incredible vehicle that we have for expression. Mm is in itself the most exquisite piece of art. Yes. And yes. is and not just a piece of art, but um, for me, art is to make beautiful. Mm. It's harmonious. That's, mm. my, that's my kind of art anyway. That's my preference, is the harmony, is the beauty, yes. is the indulgence into something which is exquisite to the senses, which stimulates passion, which excites, which um, inspires mm. to almost emanate something it's communicating something yes and so when i feel my life life itself not life out there in the world and my car and my kids and my work and my whatever mm. but just this very interaction that i'm having every single moment with something mm. it's the most incredible artist most incredible creator most incredible expressionist Mm. You know, and when I can taste that and smell that and collude with that and experience with that in mm. harmony with that and have it beautifully, yes. have my experience beautifully mm. in synchronicity so that I'm inspired and then in turn inspire. Yes. That for me is what it means to live my life. Yes. As yes. A what as a masterpiece yes i love that i love i love that that sort of concept of basically creating beauty and actually seeking to create beauty in in the world around you because that elevates everything to a whole new level and something that's mundane becomes something completely different um, and there's an unfolding that comes out of that where there's a, an appreciation of everything that's before you which is which is stunning really mm. Well, yeah. they always say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And that's... And it's with my, one of my, actually, because when I was an art student, mm. and this was like 20 years ago, more than 20 years ago, before digital cameras and everything, yeah. I was really into photographing the iris mm. in his eyes. And I had all these bellows extensions and lenses and get right in there and was photographing people's irises. And it blew my mind. Mm. See someone's eye and the layers yes. made up and then looking directly into their soul. And this was before I was even 
knew that I, what I could do with my intuitive gifts and yeah. I called it soul reading and yeah. I was just like, wow, yeah. I can see you yeah. and metaphysically oh. in this. <laughs> so I took loads and loads. I got everyone to queue up in my art college and was photographing their eyes and then I had a business doing it. And it was one of my very first pieces and it's to recognize that I, I'm seeing you. I see the beauty in you. Mm. Life is beauty. Mm. Everything about this world, everything that's been created by creative forces, not necessarily the human beings, yes. but everything that has already been created and, and, and exists, to me, and to, I guess to, to you as well, and to most people, is the most beautiful. Yes. I try and paint a painting of a tree. I'm never going to do it justice. Yes. And so for me to appreciate that and to recognize the beauty that is also me. Mm. Life has created as me. Mm. This has got to be the pinnacle. This has got to be the gold nugget. Yes. Because I can recognize the beauty out of me. I have eyes to see that beauty. But have I the eyes within, the inner eyes, mm. to perceive, turn my senses the other way, Yes. And to experience this beauty that I am, that is pre-created. I don't have to create it. I don't have to do my hair and put makeup on to be beautiful. And yes. I, I don't just mean like beautiful face. I yes. mean the raw beauty, the exquisite beauty that, that, that you can't express it. It's so beautiful. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's miraculous. It's Absolutely. like, how did that happen? Yeah. How was that created? Mm. And for me to be able to tune in, tap in, and receive that beauty and then participate in it and create with it. Yes, yeah. That, that is, for me, the be-all and end-all. That's, that's my aspiration constantly. Mm. You've got such language of a poet. I absolutely adore it. <laughs> I just rattle on. You know, one of the things that I would really love to just delve into a little bit, because you alluded to it just then, was the soul reading element. Because um, there's such a level of presence when you particularly look at someone that, that you know, you call it the soul reading because you see past the actual physical into very much the subtle and energetic of the person. But it will be really interesting just to get, you know, a, a, a little bit of a view through your eyes of that. Gosh, what, what, what does that look like? Mm. So, yeah, I mean, when, when you think about that, if you, if you sit with it for, for a couple of seconds, what comes up? Well, I can go back to that analogy I just gave of me with the lens focusing on someone's iris yes and you can focus through the layers because you don't realize unless you've seen this yourself the iris is made up of muscle tissue layer after layer after layer mm. and you can zoom with the lens through those layers and it's like journeying a little bit through a tunnel mm. i mean a short tunnel but yeah. it's a tunnel yeah you know and and so for me, when I perceive people, it's like that. It's like I can just see the eye as an eye on a face as part as everything else. Yes. Or I can zoom in. Yes. And I can look at the detail of that iris. I can look at the color. I can look at the layers. I can go past those layers and see what's looking back at me. Mm. Mm. It's like that. Yeah. And see the all of the person that's there. Yes. Because how I experience soul energy is a little bit like a drop in the ocean. So there is an ocean of energy, of isness, of creation. Mm. And then from that one source, we have our own little droplet. And yes. we're part of the ocean, and yet we're also miraculously able to experience separateness. And that separateness, as long as we've had this soul or soul identity, all the different experiences that we've had Mm. maybe in a human body, maybe somewhere else, in spirit, in between. Yeah. Everything is stored in memory. Mm. Mm. In the same way that uh, Dr. Emoto's work demonstrates that water has memory. Yes. So yeah. does, I mean, so does everything. Our cells have memory, our water has memory, mm. our, sub our mind has memory, unconscious, subconscious. Mm. It's represented in the DNA and it's represented in, the, in an energy field. Right. So on all these different levels, like zooming through those layers of the iris, 
you can look at the physical, the emotional, the mental, the spiritual, mm. right into the soul memory and back to source. Mm. Right? That's stunning. And it's all there. All yes. the information is there. Really a record of the universe and your particular fingerprint in the universe. Yes. So for some reason, I've just always been able to do this. And as when I realized I could do it, and I just turned the volume up and went, okay, let me let me really look. Yes. It's there. When yes. I turn the volume down and I don't really want to look and I zoom out, then I... Yeah. It's, it's just normal. I try yeah. normal-ish. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to... Compare. Yeah. But I'm getting a sense of the difference between sort of, um, you know, going really, you know, really going in deep and actually just kind of like interacting with the surface almost. Um, and having the ability to do that, I think is really important. Yeah. Yeah. To be the one that pulls focus. Absolutely. And before I really began to master my art, because this has become an art form, it's, I call, you know, I call it that, mm. art of soul reading. Mm. But before I really knew what I was doing, it, it just bombarded me. Yes. I experience a lot of people who come to me with their stuff who say, yeah, it, they're out of their bodies or things are happening or they're overwhelmed by mm. other people's energies. They don't know what's theirs and what isn't. Mm. And it, it's like being in the ocean and not being able to swim and yeah. have your own identity in that. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, so stunning, so beautiful, love it. So basically, when you when you think of making your work your art, um, mm -hmm. and this is one of the questions I ask because people have so many different concepts of work. I think, um, you yeah. know, work in terms of maybe where you would come from is an intermingling of life, whereas somebody goes to work and goes home sort of thing. But when you think of making your work your art, what comes up with that? I want to make it beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And and it has to be in synchronicity and harmony with me. Mm. Because when it's not, it does become work. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I do have times when it's like that. It's like, oh, work. But then it's like I have to pull back and go, where am I? Yes. Reassess, re-inspire, mm. re-aspire with myself. Mm. And I use those words, I think, inspire and aspire. Because it is to do with the breath. It is to do with me coming back home to me, to this moment. And when I get lost in that, and, and it is becoming arduous, and I am stressed, I know I'm off track. Yeah. I know that if I'm not serving myself, mm. and myself in every single way in the highest order, then am I really serving someone else? Do I know how to serve others if I don't know how to serve me? Mm. Mm. And when I get really good at serving me and inspiring myself and being that harmony and beauty with what I'm being creative with, with what I'm conjuring, with what I'm, you know, mm. manifesting and expressing and, in, and enjoying, then it's something worthy to be delivered to others. Yes. Because yes. I've tasted that cake myself. I've baked it. I've tasted it. If it tastes good, then I can share it. Yeah. You know, even making something and thinking it's great and shoving it out to everybody else. If yeah. I don't know. Yeah. If yeah. It's or not. So, yeah. So, yeah. My, what it means for me to have my work as a piece of art, I think it's always work in progress. Absolutely. As, as well, uh, Tash, because it's like, there's. My dad was an artist, a painter, mm. and I used to watch him paint as a little girl. And mm. he would work on the same painting for years because wow. he was trying to get it perfect. Wow, wow. And that really taught me something. It stayed with me, and it's like you can keep going over something and over something and over something, trying to get it perfect, trying to get it perfect. Is that what I want to be doing? Mm. Mm. Is that... It's interesting when you say that because I think I think that analogy works in different ways. So, you know, when you were saying, I mean, basically, sometimes we can actually get sort of like so honed in and so focused on one particular thing that because we keep going over in it, you know, we just end up making a mess because <laughs> it's like, well, there's nothing. It's, it's, it's beautiful the way it is. And it's, oh, no, no, no. But then on the other side of the coin, when you were talking previously about your work being an art, you know, like in the previous conversation that we were having when, when you were saying, you know, your, your work 
has become your work of art. I think that very much is speaking to your dad's painting because there's kind of like so many layers of that to infinity, isn't there, and beyond. It is exactly like that. We yes. Painting the painting a different little bit every day. Yes. yes. You know, it's actually, that's actually really interesting you said that. Yeah. And I was brushing my teeth earlier thinking about these questions. Mm. It's like that oil painting that you perpetually paint. Yes. And yes. how it starts and changes and changes and changes. And yes. Like old lady or something, you can look at that and see the layers of it. Absolutely. But, and that is beautiful. And really getting that kind of concept of, of infinity in the creative process and in your inner creator. So yes. that basically there's always more. There's always kind of a boundary and there's always more. And you always recognize that in yourself. I think it's, it's really beautiful. And when it comes to work, that's very much kind of um, the longevity element of work is very much that that's present in there, isn't it? Totally. And I, and I think it's really important to remember that. Yes. Because I know I've got a bit of my dad in me. I wanted to be a perfectionist in my art shows in college. I wanted my whole expression of all of life, the universe, and everything to be expressed <laughs> in that one show. Yeah. <laughs> and mm. I remember um, there was a student uh, teacher mm. with us for a short period of time, and she gave me the best advice ever in mm. that whole four years of being in art school. She said, Tara, you've got your whole life to express this. You don't have to do it in one show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I really took that in. That's mm. been, and it's a constant reminder and a medicine for me that I have to sip every now and again. Mm. And remember, when I'm getting stressed and I want it to be perfect and I want it to be better or I want it to be right, to just go, you know what? Take a breather. Yes. Come back. Where yeah. I got lost in my should be, yeah. I need to be, I'm not, I, you know, yeah, yeah. Eats, and just come back in. And feel that flow, feel that magic that's in process, that yeah. perpetual, eternal, even when I leave this body, still creating, still adding layers. Mm. I'm not going to capture it all. Yes. <laughs> yes, because like you say, it's a work in progress, isn't it? It's always going, it's always moving. And that's the thing with life, it never stops. It's always moving and you're always moving with it. And maybe that's the art itself. Absolutely. To stay in the movement, to stay in yeah. the Yes. yes, yes. What, what a challenge. What? Yes, yes. <laughs> but at some point it's no longer a challenge because you can't help it because that's what you're doing, right? Because that's the only thing left to do, really. Yeah. So the final question is basically when you when you tap into your inner creator, when you think of tapping into your inner creator to, to make your life a work of art and as you describe it, to see the beauty in the life around you you know what 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 ways do you do that how do you tap into your inner creator I close my eyes mm -hmm. I take a breath like that you mm -hmm. know? it's like opening all the doors and windows I go okay yes me <laughs> <laughs> it's being done let me stop let me receive mm. Mm. Doing, let me stop trying, let me open mm. and, in. and I recognize it and I say thank you mm. and I say hello as well, hello creator, hello life, hello me, hello that which already is without me pushing and trying and yes. Yes. anything at all, it's already doing it mm. and it's immediate and it's right there and it never left me and it never went anywhere and mm. it's always there waiting for me to turn around and, and drop in Yes. <laughs> and yes. go, oh, there I am again, there's yes. that creator again, there's yes. that living force again that holds me in everything that I am and everything that I do, mm. like arms just waiting to take me into an embrace. Mm. And I just drop in and I say, hello, I love you, thank you, me, mm. creator in me. And she, while you're doing that, there's kind of like this glowing sense of contented peace that's just emanating, even as you're describing that process, <laughs> which is just so beautiful, absolutely beautiful. You see, it's instant and it's super easy and I don't need to go on a course about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. It's so accessible. Mm. And, and you know what, Tash? I sometimes I actually get really emotional about this and it makes me tearful because it's so exquisite mm. and it's so rich and so amazing and yet it's so simple that so often I forget an other I mean I'm pretty good at remembering now because yes. I just I'm in it so much. Yes. But I still forget. Yes. And that so many people don't know it's there or they've so got lost out here in the senses and the world and they've got to work and they've got to do this and got to do that and the shoulds that mm. they're steps so many steps away from themselves that they can't remember how to get back mm. and to recognize what's already there for them yeah. that feeds you on a daily basis on yeah. a moment by moment basis and, and know, that's, that fires me you know that's one of the reasons why you're there as a reminder and it was one of the you know the uh, the conversation that we had before um starting the recording process it was one of those that I was saying to you that there's so many people out there who have got such strong, beautiful, amazing, intuitive gifts um, that's really linked to their creator and creative force and creator energy. And it's really about shining that through unashamedly, shining it through, you know, because basically that's one of the reasons why you are here is to remind people, remind yourself and remind other people of that, that it's so simple. It's like breathing, you know? The simplicity of it is just breathing and allowing and releasing and letting go and surrendering and allowing that moment to inform you so you can then be informed by life, you know? Totally. You said it amazingly well. Wow. Yes, yes. Tara, I absolutely love you. Thank you so much. You shine so brightly. Oh, thank you so much for being a part of this. There's so much appreciation. Yeah, I look forward to speaking with you again. Mm. Mwah. Oh.